So this is <coughs> Hanout, France 1940, not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hanou, perhaps. France 1940 is definitely pronounced correctly. Um, this is uh, a one map operational World War II game um, around the invasion of France and Belgium in 1940, World War II. Um, yeah, by Decision Games. It came as part of World War magazine issue 80 and I was alerted to it by Kev over at the big board. And if you don't watch the big board, um, then you probably don't watch this channel either, and I don't know why I'm saying it, but if you don't, and you do end up seeing this, then you should check it out, because it's great. Okay, um, yeah, this is a, um, a single map operational World War II game with uh, an interesting pedigree, so uh, in that respect, similar to... Um, across the Bug River, which I just played. You can see, um, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see all the charts and tables for the game printed on this map sheet up here, and some more tables there, some identification information in very, very small text in here, and some game tracks around the edge, a terrain effects chart here. So a very self-contained magazine game with a play area that's probably about half to two thirds of the map area in here. So um, this is part of the uh, Grand Operational Simulation Series or GOSS by Decision Games. And the GOSS series of games is uh, essentially all monster Western Front World War II games. So far, the series so far is all sort of monster Western Front. Um, so you have uh, the smallest, uh, Herc and Hell's Forest, which is the sort of uh, assault on the the West Wall uh, and Arken, late 44, two maps, seven counter sheets. And you've got Wachtam Rhine, the Battle of the Bulge, four maps, God knows how many counter sheets. You've got Lucky Forwards, Patton's Third Army and Lorraine, September to December 44, that's four and a half maps, 12 counter sheets. And then you've got Atlantic Wall, which is about seven, seven and a half maps and, I don't know, something silly, 18 counter sheets or something. So these, generally, the GOSS system is monster games, which are therefore quite daunting, uh, quite inaccessible and quite um, expensive. So, um, yeah, Atlantic Wall is about £230 in the UK, which is quite a lot for a game. So here you've got a one map, one counter sheet um, game with a 16 page rule book as opposed to the normal DOS system rules which are usually, I think, do they run 64 pages or 80 pages? I can't remember the size of the full rule book. And then normally you'd have the specific, the scenario specific rules which would be another huge book of stuff. So this is 16 pages all in in this document obviously they've had to do they've had to strip quite a lot of stuff out so a lot of the logistic stuff are only you know there's a sort of trace supply system in here but not much more whereas full goss would have all kinds of supply rules for fuel and ammo and trucks and all the rest of it um there's a very stripped out art there are no artillery counters used in this you we use the hqs as a sort of proxy for you know artillery fire if it's within range certain ranges of hqs then then you just spend artillery points to uh, to fire artillery and so on there's all kinds of stuff stripped out of here and even so even so with the system stripped down to 16 pages it, it is still a little bit sparse in places the the type is quite small and three column, quite dense text. Uh, this is not a this is not a straightforward, easy going read. This is procedural, dense, complex sets of instructions. Um, so I'm not at the moment. I'm still trying to figure out whether it is complex in uh, really complex or whether it's a combination of complex and and a little bit confusing <laughs> and I think it's the latter 
Um, I think in places the rules don't necessarily do the reader um, a great uh, deal of favours, but maybe that's just the nature of the beast. I'll give an example just so I don't sound like I'm whinging. So we do, um, we have this section called observation and visibility, and in order to fire artillery to conduct a fire support mission, a friendly unit must be able to observe enemy units or a population feature in the target hex. Great, so we get all these rules about line of sight and blocking terrain and range and visibility and observation covering terrain, which is where things are in forests and woods and you can't see them even if they would normally be line of sight. Great. And then we get a paragraph up here that says all that stuff you've just read doesn't apply to the Germans because they can use air power to observe French units not in woods, towns or forests. And you go, OK, so I've just learnt all that stuff about spotting and now you're telling me that actually the Germans can just spot from the air. OK, great. But then you come down to the next page and it says um, they do need spotters. Each fire support mission requires a spotter. Exception, a German fire support mission using air points uh, doesn't require a spotter. So we go from spotting rules to the Germans don't need the spotting rules to the Germans sometimes need the spotting rules in the space of three pages. And, um, I, you know, part of me thinks, OK, can, can we can we read that all at once rather than also dutting around between fatigue recovery and the combat phase sequence and HQ mobile mode and, and you know, consolidate all that learning into one place. So sometimes these are a little bit, um, a little bit haphazard in how they present the information, but you know, <clears throat> you, you get there and you end up with a picture of what's going to happen. Um, yeah, so I ha I also had, um, questions about some of the use of these superscripts and whether uh, these are anti um, armor points and anti tank or or, or or factors in combat. These superscript numbers that um, uh, if I move over here, you can see them on here a two and a, a three and a four superscripts on the attack and de defense values. And I wondered whether, uh, as in most games, you'd take the best that you had in a stack, or whether you'd add them up, or what you do, uh, or you'd just choose one. Um, and not wanting to import processes from other games, which I think is usually the starting point of making colossal rules errors. So I went looking for what you actually did in this game and um, and couldn't find it in, in here. Um, the mitigation is that the full GOSS rules for the series are available for download as a PDF online from Decisions Games website. Um, and so it's fairly trivial to then go and see what the full GOSS system rules say. And they do tell you what to do. They say, you know, you pick a lead armour unit which for which you're going to use your armour or anti-tank values. So, um, problem solved. Um, so, out of the box, um, this is um, a, a fairly, um, fairly demanding game to read and sort of internalise. And there will be little bits of work to do to reach uh, the point where you have a sort of comfortable I know what I'm doing kind of picture of the game but it's a big uh, I mean not this instance of it but it's a complex detailed game it's an operational game which l focuses down on almost grand tactical levels of detail in combat in planning in logistics in command control in everything you want to look at and so it is going to have that that um, demand. So this is not something I'm going to be playing quickly or trying to rush through. Um, it is something that I'm going to try and play uh, fairly slowly and methodically and see what it can show me. Um, so I've got some French set up. I don't pretend that they're set up well, but they are set up according to the rules. <laughs> And I've got some uh, a German Panzer division over here stacked uh, um, within stacking limits um, on sort of notional hexes just off board, which are going to have to come on to these th in these three hexes 
here, but you can't, you don't move units as stacks. It's interesting. You can stack units, but you can't move them as stacks. Um, so they're going to move as individual units. Um, and I think I need to probably come up with a plan based around where I'm going to try and base our headquarters because a lot of the ranges of artillery and air support are you know ranged from our HQ we've got lots of air support that we're going to want to use to try and weaken the the French line we're going to want to hit it with artillery and then we want to go going to go in and assault it with something and that might take us a little while to arrange but um, you know that's our initial plan we've got another panzer um, division which I believe is going to come on around this road here and then we've got um, some infantry divisions that have to stay on no close to the map, hex, map edges but they're going to come on up here and another one on the south map edge um, in in this sort of area um, overall objectives for the Germans are to um, to get a, a unit into one of the French supply um, hex hexes here if they do that they win an instant victory or we're fighting over victory point locations uh, like this and like this and like this and the French can win an instant victory by preventing the Germans crossing this roadway um, if the Germans can't get across that roadway then the French will win it uh, by turn 11 the French will win uh, an instant victory this is a 15 turn game um, there are three turns to a day a morning an, an after a p.m. and a night turn um, for each of five days and handily I hadn't noticed this but there are little flags in here telling us that we're going to get some uh, some changes to our our troops although the the French interestingly are going to withdraw these two armoured formations uh, halfway through the game so um, we best get something done with them uh, while they're sticking around with us um, so yeah that's going to make life interesting uh, I'm glad I looked uh, looked actually at the at the sort of arrivals and departures before I started playing because it would be something of a shock if you'd pinned your entire defence on uh, two uh, <laughs> armoured uh, formations which then decided to withdraw so uh, yeah uh, that's an opening spiel about this. Hounet France 1940, part of the GOSS um, system, decision games. And uh, yeah, I, I don't quite know whether I'll do it turn by turn. Um, I, I, I don't think I will, because I don't think a lot is going to happen in turn one. The, the Germans are going to come on board and the French are going to have to make some choices about whether they... Uh, um, whether they uh confront the germans you know immediately or whether they do try and fall fall back or whether they're comfortable where they are um yeah so a lot of unknowns in this a lot of not knowing how it's going to work the combat looks um extremely interesting but quite involved the um the artillery in the air but similarly this this whole combat our process does look like it will generate lots of um, lots of nuance in in what's going on. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. This is a system that I've looked at for a long, a, a reasonably long time because I like OCS, so I like systems on this scale, and I tend to like operational systems that drill down into some detail, as with things like less than sixty miles. Um, you know, although that's modern, but it's a similar sort of thing. It's an operational, but it's it's peering right down into the detail of an operation uh, operational level. Um, so I, I should like this. The uh, Goss had a reputation until the release of Lucky Forward, which is the latest, had a reputation as being quite impenetrable and the rules being a bit of a dog's breakfast. Um, that was the reputation. The uh, Lucky Forward... Uh, came with a sort of 2.0 completely revised stripped down rebuilt uh, rule set which which the aficionados have said are, are a great improvement on the uh, original so um, yeah I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to this and uh, seeing if it does give us a proper a proper flavor of the 
of the Goss system. So here we are in Hanou, Hanou, France, 1940, part of the Grand Operational Simulation Series by Decision Games. Um, turn one, you can see we've moved the uh, Germans onto the map here. And this was, uh, so this has been, this is a German unit up here, as though it's a sort of light blue colour, it is uh, German, part of 4th Panzer. This is 4th Panzer Division then that's moved on here. And now we have to decide what we're going to do in the combat phase. We've done the movement phase and we, um, there, there should have been an earlier phase where we assigned units um, exploit markers and prepared assault markers and so on. But because they were off map, we couldn't really do any of that. So they've come on map, <clears throat> we're coming into the combat phase and things start getting a little bit tricky as to what we're actually going to do. Um, we've got some targets, we've got a target in here for example um, that we probably want to assault um, um, and probably fairly minimally we can see he's not uh, that strong a unit, he's one attack, one defence with a one anti-tank factor and 10 movement with a five quality. We can see he's pretty poor. I reckon this um, this uh, for um, infantry battalion will be enough to comfortably overrun him and take care of him. I shouldn't use the word overrun because that's something specific, but should be able to comfortably take care of him. So the first thing we do in the, um, in the combat phase for the for the active player, which at the moment is the Germans, is we mark up any um, tactical assaults we want to do. We can't at mark up prepared assaults because we needed to have put down those markers prior to movement. And as I say, we were off map at the time, so we couldn't do that. But we can mark that up with a tactical assault there to, to, to say that we're going to try uh, a combat um, there. Now, um, the number of assaults we can mark up, this again gets a little bit um, hazy, I think. So the, the headquarters mode determines how much of stuff we can do. So if a headquarters is static, i.e. sort of set in place, then it can do more stuff than if it's mobile, so moving. But if it's static, it can't move. So um, our German HQ had to come onto the map and so is in a mobile posture. <laughs> and that means that um, that means that um, let's have a look. We can use half of our barrage points and our normal barrage points are nine, so we've got five. We've got a range of five with our artillery barrages. There's no limit to the number of air points we can assign to attacks. We can um, conduct a maximum of three ground assaults. And we can uh, assign a maximum of six units with an exploit marker. Oh, but they, they would need to have been put on earlier. So um, the thing is, we can conduct a maximum of three ground assaults. So this would be one ground assault, in this case a tactical assault, and we could, we could conduct two more. But that isn't to say that we're limited in the number that we can say we're going to do. I don't know if there's a limit to the number of counters we can put down. Because uh, later on in the combat phase, we can decide actually we're not going to bother with the ground with the ground assault. Uh, you know, uh, you know. In step five, the active player may remove attack markers, both tactical assault and prepared assault, as necessary or desired. So it could be that we can put we should put more down here, and then remove them again later. Or it may be that the intention is that the um, restrictions of the headquarters are meant to be um, are meant to be strict limits on the number of um, uh, ground assaults that we can say we're conducting as well as well as actually conduct. Um, 
and I, I'm I'm really not clear on that point whether it's a limit on the number that can be nominated or the number that can later be resolved. Um, yes. So, uh, uh, anyway, that uh, th these kind of subtleties are, are quite hard to quite hard to pick your way through in this raw set. So there are a couple of other places that we could attack, in fact only two that we could do Grand Assault, so we could use this stack here into this stack here and we could try Grand Assaulting that. But we can see that there's eight defence factors and uh, a four armour factor in there, so that we, we know that this stack is pretty tough. Um, and similarly, we can see quite a decent sized stack in here that we could attack, but again, we know it's going to be pretty tough. So I am tempted not to um, go just blasting into those with attacks just yet, and perhaps take a more considered approach. Um, because... If you can do prepared assaults, then you can. that's the only way to attack from multiple hexes. So, for example, if we cleared this out of the way, we could then move these guys. We could then mark these as prepared assault and these as prepared assault. And maybe these two, and then do double hex prepared assaults on both of these. And you'd say, well, you're only allowed three markers. But we could also maybe flip our HQ over to over to um, uh, static, but I think that has to, we have to stay mobile or static for the entire game day, so I think we could only do that in an AM turn, and we wouldn't want to wait that long. But still, we might get through, uh, we might get a prepared assault. We certainly want the opportunity to use some of our air power and our artillery to see if we can't soften these guys up. So at the moment we have got five artillery barrage points, and we've got 16 air points. And the artillery barrage points we get per um, turn, um, and the air points we get every three turns. So I think what we'd quite like to do is try um, an artillery barrage on these guys, and maybe an artillery barrage and, and some air points, or maybe some air points on both and an artillery barrage on one. And uh, just leave this attack in here for now and see if we can't see if we can't do some damage with some um, some barrages first. So that's my plan and I'm just going to start assigning these and going through and seeing what happens. Okay so I've marked up the airstrikes that the Germans are going to do. They're going to use three the maximum um, of their air points to strike this hex and this hex, and we'll do these on camera. So um, three air points, um, each air point gives you uh, a strength of two, so that is a, a, a fire support strength of six base. And then we are going to uh, add and subtract some modifiers, and in this case the modifiers in here are we have um, some woods, uh, so that's a minus one. We have AFVs, but they're mixed with non-AFVs. In this case, under there is some um, mechanised infantry, but it's not AFVs. Um, so that is minus two, so a total of minus three. And there are four steps in here which don't give any positive modifiers, so we have a total of uh, minus three. So we take that barrel and that... Um, strength of 6, we subtract 3, and we've got a net of plus 3, and we add that, that's your fire support value, and we add that to uh, a d10 roll, and that gives us a result on the table. So uh, we've rolled an 8, plus 3 is 11, and if I swing the camera slowly over here onto this table, we can see and 11 gives us 1 and that is a um, step loss so um, 
let's go and do the other one uh, first I'll remember that result it's not hard so over here we've got the same again we've got three uh, with three air points turning into six barrage strength we've got minus one for some rough terrain we've got minus two because there's some AFVs in here but it's not all AFVs so that's minus three but we've got plus one because there are six steps in here so a net minus two um, six barrage uh, strength minus two is plus four and we roll a ten and that's really really good air striking from the Germans that's a total of 14 and you can see that's two step losses so one step loss and two step losses already inflated um, so I'm gonna just work out how they have to be prioritized whether the the French get to choose what to uh, what to lose and come back well I'm just going to amend that artillery strike segment that we did there with this important rule when reading the dice a roll of zero always equals zero one to remember there because that means that that second artillery strike by the Germans uh, did not uh, produce a result of 14 it in fact produced a result of four and less than seven is no effect so instead of two step losses had I continued to get that rule wrong is actually no step losses so we've got a step loss um, to do in here and no step losses to do in here and then we'll actually be on to some uh, French decision making as to where to throw some artillery and potentially air points around as well okay so the uh, French satisfied their um, step loss actually by retreating you can mitigate one step loss by right retreating and taking one of these artillery shift markers and what that would do if it were relevant in this situation would pr be to provide <clears throat> a negative modifier for your you, you as a defender or a positive modifier for an attacker in a ground assault but there but since none of these are marked for ground assault and they'd actually need a prepared assault marker to move in and retain an, uh, a prepared assault. So that would be the strength of prepared assaults. If this stack had a prepared assault marker, it could have followed in the retreating um, French unit and kept the prepared assault ready to take advantage of that artillery shift marker. But since um, this, this was the first turn, they just moved on, weren't marked up for assaults. Um, They've just retreated away from uh, the artillery strikes and um, now have that artillery shift, but they will reorganize at the end of the combat phase and won't have that artillery shift anymore. So that is the French, uh, the German, excuse me, the German airstrikes done. Now we have French, uh, the uh, French opportunities to do both airstrikes and artillery barrages. And um, I, I the situation for the French here is quite um, straightforward, I think, in, in that they've got um, a really juicy looking target here in clear terrain and um, another really juicy looking target here in rough terrain, but that's only a minus one for the rough terrain. They do have a spotter here on a vantage point, uh, which was the point of putting him there in the first place. So they have a spotter on a vantage point there, um, which I think uh, gives a plus one. Observer unit on a vantage point is a plus one. And because he's on a vantage point, he's got a spotting range of three hexes. So he can see straight across here into here and he can see straight down here into here. Um, so as the French, we don't get air observation, by the way. So what we're going to do is drop some. Um, we've got three air points and seven artillery barrage points. And I think we'll drop everything we can. So the first thing we'll do is drop um, three air points onto here. Oh, hold on a second. The, the limit to that is the size of this unit. This is only a company sized unit. <clears throat> And a company-sized unit is limited in the barrage points that he can 
call in and I think uh, sorry in the yes the barrage or air points he can call in and I think it's two for a company sized unit I just need to check it um, a company sized unit may spot for one fire fire support mission using two air points yeah so that's gonna have to be a two air point mission and it's got to be that because nothing else can see this hex. These guys can't see through the trees and stuff. They're in open terrain. They can't. They've got no line of sight. Nothing else has got line of sight. Line of sight is generally one hex unless you're either in a town or a vantage point. So um, here um, we will call in uh, two air points. And that will give us a barrage of four. The rough terrain is a minus one, so that gives us a three. The AFV, uh, and I think there's an infantry unit in there, there is. So the AFV infantry mix gives us a minus two. So that's a plus one. The spotter on a vantage point is plus one, so that's plus two. So we've got four, five, four, four, three, two. Yeah, two. And then how many steps have we got in here? Two, four, six, eight, nine steps of stuff in here. And that is a plus two. So overall, uh, we're on, I think, plus four. I think we're on, <laughs> yeah, I think we're on minus one for the rough and minus two for the FVs. And then plus one for the vantage point and plus two for the uh, unit density for, and they all cancel each other out. And we're on plus four. So let's get a blue uh, French uh, die and we roll an 8 plus 4 is 12 and over here on the table is an AS1 and I think that's going to be pretty much the same for the German uh, forces as for the uh, French. They, that is a artillery shift and a one result and so what they're going to do is retreat a hex um, and take an artillery shift instead of taking the instead of taking the, the casualty um, and that would put <coughs> an artillery shift and then another artillery shift for the um, for the retreat and they would end up with a double artillery shift like that on them which again where their attacks going on would um, uh, would obviously influence the round assaults but they're not so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to spot from here because that will allow us to throw more artillery around this guy would only a company sized unit what would that let us fire that would set us, uh, that would allow us to fire three barrage points, whereas a battalion sized unit, um, and I believe we'll have one. Hmm. No, I think these are all company sized. Oh no, we've got an infantry battalion unit in there. That infantry battalion can call in. Oh, and he's on a vantage point as well. Oh, beautiful. So that will allow him to call in six barrage points. So here's our target, six barrage points. Now, artillery barrage points are on a one for one basis. So the, the, the barrage strength is six. I'm using the HQ static and HQ mobile markers. Um, to record barrage points. So here's the HQ firing. He's got seven barrage points. We'll drop him down to one. 
where the French air points currently are as well. Okay, that's his six barrage points. Um, so that's a plus six on the die to start on the on the roll to start with. Um, we've got a plus two for the density. That's plus eight. We've got. Um, plus one for the vantage point, that's plus nine. We've got minus two for there being AFVs, that's plus seven. But all in all, that's a pretty nasty artillery attack going into the Germans there. That's a seven strength artillery strike going in. So we've got a D10 plus seven on the fire support mission table. Uh, only a zero fails to have an effect. Um, everything else will do something. Ow. We'll try and get the roll in here. That's a 4 plus 7 is an 11, and that's a 1 result. Um, so that's, uh, that's a step loss, and the Germans will do uh, exactly what the French did. They've got no reason to stick around and take casualties. They're not marked up as assaulting. They, they've no interest in... You know, they're just trying to get to terms with the, uh, get to grips with the French at the moment. They don't want to take casualties, so they would move back there, or they are moving back there, and taking the artillery shift like that. Um, now, what that means is um, we're now coming into the um, section where we do the German artillery and uh, I don't think they're able to get any artillery shots in um, because they've got no spotters the, the only the only thing they can see is this one here because that's the only thing they've got anything adjacent to and I think we're fairly confident of taking him out with the ground assault <clears throat> um, I'm not sure the Germans are, are much interested in in firing any artillery, like I say, unless we're in a town. Okay, so this guy, no, he's in a village. There's no, there's no towns over here. These, these red dots are, are villages. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's nothing that we can see to call artillery in on. So, we're not going to do any of that. Um, now we can remove any active, um, any, we can try and remove any ground attack markers that we don't want, but we do want this. So we're now going to conduct this tactical assault. So I'm going to stop this and come back. Okay, let's have a very quick look at this combat to round this um, off. This uh, German uh, battalion has got an attack strength of six and the um, anti-tank unit that's defending has got a defense strength of one with one anti-tank. The anti-tanks aren't going to matter because there's no armor that they're facing. So it's a six to one attack. The defender, the French unit, will choose this rough terrain in the bottom of the hex here. He can choose any terrain in the hex he wants as the defensive terrain. He's going to choose rough terrain and he's got a vantage point in there. So if we come over here, um, it's a six to one and it's on line two, which is the line for rough terrain. The, the chart's telling you that. So we're on this column M, six to one in rough. We look at the uh, um, column shifts and there's nothing beneficial for the attacker. They're not prepared assaulting. Then the attacker's not marked with an artillery shift. They're not a multi-division attack. They're not over, nothing overstacked. Uh, they're not attacking at night and they're not attacking a town. The defender has a vantage point. That moves us one left into the five to one column. And the defender is not marked. Artillery shift. There's no multi-divisions. There's no overstacking. There's no improved positions. And he hasn't got any support from adjacent defenders. So we end up on this five to one column here. And we've got a, a set of a set of results for the attacker that they're rolling on and the defender are rolling on. We have to work out some die roll modifiers. 
and I can tell you I've already worked them out and the only Dyroll modifiers here are that the attackers have a proficiency of 7 and the defenders have a proficiency of 5 and the difference of those is 2 so the attacker get a plus 2 bonus which is worth 5 10 on the dice and these are percentile dice rolls so it's a 5 to it's on this column here column L and both the attacker and defender now roll with a plus 10 and they roll percentile dice so I'm going to roll the Germans first, blacks as tens, and they are going to get a 68 plus 10 is 78. Sorry, I've knocked that. That was a 68. Um, so we'll pop that there, and then I'll roll the French result out. Uh, blues as tens for the French and they've got a 35 and actually lower is better for them but that will still be a 45 and we'll pop that over there and then we'll read off what we've got so a 78 uh, for the Germans is um, a 2-1 so there's two discretionary uh, results and one mandatory result for the defender and the um, and the French roll of 45 and that goes off the table and so has no effect. So there's a two discretionary and one mandatory result for the defender and I think the mandatory result is going to mean uh, a step loss. I don't think there's any way around it. I don't think they can mitigate it with um, with a retreat. Um, so I will come back on that. Well, that was correct. The mandatory result was a step loss, and that means we have our first casualty in the French eliminated units box. And I think we will advance our um, German battalion onto this vantage point um, so that they can now have a look around at things that they'd like to airstrike or drop artillery on um, next time they get the opportunity. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the, um, the German turn or the German part of turn one. Um, what's left for them to do an exploitation phase that they can't do because they couldn't place any exploit markers and a fatigue recovery phase which uh, they can't do well they can't, can do but they've got nothing fatigued so now we remove uh, we'll remove all those artillery shift markers and we will go into the French part of the turn but I will probably do that um, on a separate film